Okay. Did um, uh, everyone cho just a thumbs up? Everyone chosen someone and been writing down some facts about them. Cool. So, uh, just as a, an example, who's top of my screen? Alex A. Oh, look, we've got Alex A and Alex B. That's quite entertaining, isn't it? Alex A. Um, just, just um, uh, without revealing the identity of the person, just give us an example of uh, some of the facts that you've written down. Two or three. Um, okay. Um, electrical engineer. Um, uh, identifies as a heterosexual man, um, lives in a village on the south coast. Perfect. Thank you. That'll do now. Pause there. Um, Phoebe, again, just give us some uh, two or three representative facts of what you've written down. Um, gardener lives in a cottage, plays the ukulele. Okay, great. I want to meet that person. Great, thank you. <laughs> Got a ukulele playing gardener can't be bad. Um, uh, Alex B, give us an example of a few facts. Um, I put female, dog owner, middle child. Okay, female, dog owner, middle child. Good. Uh, Clover? Um, I put dark brown shoulder length hair, born in Bristol and five foot ten. Okay, great. Hannah? Um, went to an all girls school. Um, she, they have two Hungarian Vizslers, um, is a beautician. Great. George? Uh, brown hair, tallish, 23, docketing assistant. Lovely, thank you. Anna? I put uh, hair greying and tinged with old dye. I put five foot seven and growing shorter. And I said they're frequently traveling, so there's no real home base for them. Interesting. Jessica? I put five foot four. Four dark brown hair, head teacher with six dogs, two cats and a horse. <laughs> it's a lot of animals going on. Andrea? Natural public speaker, loves food, loves people. Okay, lovely. Good. So all those things, um, I think everything that you've given is something which is stand up in court. Maybe natural public speaker is one thing which maybe someone in a, in a really, really nasty lawyer could make an argument about. But everything, everything, everything else, those are facts about those person which are true. They stand up in a court of law. There is no getting around them. OK. So now what I'd like you to do is I'm just going to go around and I'm just going to ask you just to say if, um, uh, imagine we were just chatting you and I were just chatting and this person came up in conversation and I said, oh, so and so, oh, what are they like? Yeah. So you're answering the question, what are they like? Yeah. Simple enough. Andrea, let's start with you this time. Um, she is very easy to talk to. She is very sweet. <laughs> okay. Lovely. Easy to talk to. Sweet. Lovely. Honor. They're, they're very outgoing in a, when they're in public but under a, quite high pressure. <laughs> Good. George? Uh, fairly quiet and awkward, but a uh, calming presence. Interesting. Jessica? Uh, very outgoing and empathic, but also kind of scatterbrained. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, B? <laughs> um, quite shy, but the best person I know. Sweet, so, so nice. Um, Clover? Um, salt of the earth, um, a really good mimic, like really good at every accent, um, yeah. and uh, very talented. Hannah? Um, doesn't take herself too seriously, has a great sense of humour. Um, Northern? <laughs> that, that could be a fact thing, couldn't it? In fact, that yeah. could go in the, in the fact con. Rachel, and I forgot you earlier, Rachel. I'm really sorry. It's because uh, I'm going by screen in my head. I have this pathetic <laughs> brain of mine. Rachel. Um, can, can other people hear Rachel? Is it just me that's got the problem? No. So can you, uh, you made me talk a little bit more directly into the mic. Oh, can you hear me now? Um, 
really, I'd describe him as very, very funny, very hilarious, constantly lives his life as a parody of something or someone, um, but is actually a little bit awkward and shy at times. Okay, lovely. Phoebe? Pretty tell. Um, I'd say, oh, she's lovely. She's one of the sweetest people you'll ever meet. Uh, who've we got left? Alex A. Uh, um, I just put easy to talk to, but quite a private person. Okay. Is that everyone? Have we covered everyone? I did a little go at that. Okay. So, first of all, we looked at, at facts, and we're throwing northern. We're definitely throwing northern in there because that's a that's a, a biographical fact. Um, uh, then, when I asked you, you know, what are they like? Notice all those words you use, like they're you know easygoing or warm or uh, you know lovely, talented, sweet. And notice the way that we talk about people is we use adjectives. Now I'd like to now think about the idea of character. And because um, most of us who end up in the world of the performing arts have been educated in the Western academic tradition. The first time we meet the idea of character is usually through English GCSEs. And what happens, you know, describe the character of Lady Macbeth. Describe the character of so and so. And what happens is, is that we dutifully write down words like ambitious, you know, um, uh, selfish, self-motivated, intelligent, uh, manipulative, all these adjectives. And as you've just been describing uh, these people, these real people, you've been using adjectives. And what I want to leave you with, as we're coming to the end of our first session, is the idea that character, as nearly always talked about in theatrical circles, is bullshit. Character, as most people understand it, is not how some, what somebody is, it's how we describe them. So very often what happens is it's the words that we use to describe some of them that we start to think are their character. But actually it's your perspective on them. Those people are much more than those adjectives that you said. They don't go round being sweet. Sweet is your assessment, your judgment of them, depending on the space between the two of you and your triangulation of them. But people don't go around being sweet. You interpret their actions and you, you sum those up. You describe them, you summarise them as being sweet, but it does not mean they are sweet. And for an actor, this is a real problem because when we talk about character, we use words that are descriptors of that person's behaviour, not the behaviour itself. And there's so much guff talked about character in theatrical training, I think, personally, because people think character, you just need an increasingly refined set of adjectives. Bullshit. Adjectives are judgments. Judgments come from an outside perspective. People behave, they do stuff. The way in which they do it is what we outsiders interpret as character. So while we have to use adjectives to talk about them because it's the way the language works, as performers we need to go behind those adjectives and find what behaviour gives rise to those sorts of adjectives. And we need to look at behaviour. So does that make sense what I'm saying? So I'm blowing, I'm trying to blow out the water, the, the traditional idea of character as a series of adjectives because as a performer if you're invited to perform adjectives, you do all sorts of shit acting that you see all over the stage of both straight theatre as well as opera, as well as musicals. So in the last minute, your task between now and next time is I'd like you to choose um, one of the Aries that you know really well. And I would like you to look at the character who sings that aria and your task is using the libretto of the opera, write down as many facts as you can about the character, based on the libretto only, not on stage directions, not on dramatis personae. So if you're playing, if, you're, if you choose your Carabino aria, 
you look through you look through the whole libretto of Figaro and you go, what facts are there about my character? And when we meet next time, I will be going around saying, okay, what facts did you get about whichever character it was? Is that clear as a task? It's the facts column, not the judgment column.